This is Paul. I, I, I dropped my phone. Oh. That's why I had to turn it off and on again. The battery, the battery fell out of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, gave me a little time to get a little more uh, organized. You know, I was reading this law dictionary. They have what's called continuing breach. Mm -hmm. A violation of the law that persists for a prolonged period of time or one that is repeated over and over again. Yeah. Now, as I had mentioned in the last video, um, when I had scanned in this document, yes, uh-huh, and uh, there was no jurisdiction over the parties, the minors, and the subject matter, I did not receive re actual notice of the court hearing. I was not present at the hearing, yes. It was issued until 2025, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, there there was no service, or maybe they did serve me, but they served me in a, a public library. Right! Uh, the petitioner did not sign the protection order. Yes. This signature is different than the signature right here. Right. Okay. And uh, I was not named as responded, and the petitioner was not named on the certified copy of the order uh, to surrender weapons. Yes. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it was entered in on PENCOM, the WACIC. Yes, yes, yes. There is no signature of the protected person, coach. Now, a breach of, of law means that you keep repeating day after day the crimes of not enforcing the laws of the United States. <laughs> now, this order is issued in uh, accordance with the full faith and credit provisions of the Violence Against Women's Act, 18 U.S.C. 2265. <laughs> I probably sent hundreds of emails with a screen print that says, Notice an opportunity to be heard must be protected. You cannot have a court hearing unless the respondent is given the actual number of legal days that there is proof of service before there's a court hearing <laughs> for it to, to, what does it say here, uh, for it to be issued in accordance of the full faith and credit provisions of the Violence Against Women's Act. <laughs> now, You'll notice in 2011, <laughs> this protection order was not issued in accordance with the full faith and credit provisions of the Violence Against Women's Act. Now, let's say you're in law enforcement. You get an email from me 18 months ago, 20 months ago, and <laughs> you read it and you say, well, it, it had some something about conference center meetings and double E to double J, but there was that document in there, and usually there was some sort of statement to the effect that uh, the petitioner didn't sign it. The respondent wasn't given uh, notice or opportunity to be heard and it was issued for 10 years now every day that you the oath of office have known about a crime and you've had the legal obligation for the enforcement of the law there's uh, a breach a breach um, a breach of the legal obligation of those that are sworn oaths now, it's one thing to have the knowledge that my rights are being violated and my sons have been abused since 2011. <laughs> it's another thing to be charged day after day after day with the same crime. <laughs> now, instead of just one official misconduct, there's, oh, four or five hundred additional charges of official misconduct. <laughs> 
Now, every day that you got some sort of communication from me that has illustrated, <laughs> that has documented, <laughs> has evidenced the crime of violating my rights and the rights of my sons, and you decided you thought that life was a casino and you were just going to eat another cookie, well, every day that you have the knowledge, why don't I add one additional charge of obstruct justice now let's say you're in a, a court of my peers po, 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 and you're being charged with all oh, 400 counts of obstruction of justice now it's an approximate number of times but every time that you know that the law is not being enforced because you thought well he's gonna have to motion the court I'm like no I don't. There's no jurisdiction for me to motion the court when the court did not give me notice and opportunity to be heard. Now, I said that about last year at this time. So it could be 365 additional counts of the crime of refusing to enforce the laws of the United States. <laughs> now, when you, when you get charged, because you will get charged with the crime of official misconduct, <laughs> then every day you decided you weren't going to enforce the law, you get another charge until it adds up to thousands of years of prison time I'm gonna go